Every man must know why God gives him a prophetic woman because there, there is a big blessing in having a prophetic woman. You see, Esther was helping King Ahasuerus. He could not spot the life of Haman without Esther. So that seer's anointing was working through Esther for him to see something he could not see. She manifested devils out of people that were concealed, secretive, and un it wasn't easy for you to identify them. Saints, as you're joining in, I want you to share this broadcast and say, Lord, I received the prophet's reward. Everybody, share, share this broadcast to your page. This is very powerful. We are here for 10 minutes, 10 minutes, and this is life-changing. The prophetic woman, why God created the prophetic woman, because the prophetic woman helps the work of God go forth. When Adam was in that garden alone, God understood, I'm going to send somebody to help you. Which means that without their assistance, the task that you have will be incomplete. When God calls you to be a prophetic woman, he calls you to leave being a perverse woman. That means operating outside of the image of God, the ways of God, the functionality of God, the mindset of God. If you look at the word perversion, we hear the word version in perversion. Version is a specific type. It, it describes a certain way that a person uh, or a thing is. It, it explains the exactness, the specifics, the category in which a thing is. So when you look at the word perversion, that means that you leave the version in which God made you to be. You leave the functionality, the way, the image that what God wants you to function as. So when the Lord made the prophetic woman, he intended that the prophetic woman would operate a certain way as his eyes. This is why when Satan is ready to attack a woman's life, he attacks your eyes. He gets you into lust. The eyes become the weakness of the woman. Your eyes see certain things. Your eyes want certain things. Your eyes pursue certain things. And you notice it is the eyes that become the weakness magnet for the woman. Think about that. The weakness magnet. The eyes. Because God created the prophetic woman to be his eyes on earth. Remember, there was a time where even God told Abram to listen to Sarah because she was the prophetic woman. When you are the prophetic woman, you'll know how to diffuse a tough situation. You become a peacemaker. Remember, Abigail is looking at David in his rage and David knows how to kill. David knows how to war, but she calms him down. She gets him to relax because that prophetic woman, she knows how to diffuse a situation. When God created the prophetic woman, he wanted to exude his peace around the earth. So God pits the prophetic woman in places where there's turmoil, where there's issues, where there's conflict, where there's jealousy, where there's envy, where there's wars, where there's strife. That's why when you're a prophetic woman, you never adapt to the atmosphere of carnality. You never, if you take a note, remember that. You never adapt to the atmosphere of carnality. Never allow that atmosphere to rule you. Never allow that atmosphere to become you. When you get in the environment where pettiness is going on, jealousy is going on, strife is going on, competition is going on, you never let that environment influence you. When God created the prophetic woman, he wanted his wisdom to be revealed in a high manner and a high level of beauty and elegance and excellence. A prophetic woman is the beauty of God. God reveals his beauty through the prophetic woman. So when God made the prophetic woman, he wanted people to see his beauty. He wanted people to see his glory. 
He wanted people to see his excellence, his elegance, his perfection. So when you are walking in that born again lifestyle and you're led by the spirit, when you become a prophetic woman, you are the answer to God's problems. You are the answer to ministry. God created the prophetic woman to receive and transfer his power in a ministry. That's how he gets the circulation of his glory in a ministry. Saints, there was something that happened when the queen of Sheba submitted to Solomon. Not only was she submitted to Solomon, but Sheba began to respect Solomon because of her. She brought honor to Solomon throughout Sheba. The people of Sheba, if they had a bad perspective, it was changed through that queen of Sheba. The queen of Sheba was determining how people saw Solomon by how she responded to Solomon because she was considered an example. She was considered a, a, a trophy. She was considered a portrait of perfection. And there was many women and men that listened to her praise and her honor and her worship and her favor and her attentiveness and her commitment and dedication. And Sheba was one to the gospel of Solomon. When I say the gospel, I mean the good news, the wisdom of Solomon. They was one to the intelligence of Solomon and they started listening to him too. Because what she had to say about him fascinated them. So just think about it. The prophetic woman, she brings attention to God's glory, where he's working, where he's talking, where he's moving, where he's doing signs and wonders. Because Solomon was now magnified in Sheba because of her. Saints, if you look at the prophetic woman, Mary Magdalene, she goes to the tomb and is seeing Jesus' angels. So Jesus' angels are being seen by her. These young men are talking to her. Angels are talking to this woman because she's a prophetic woman. They know that she belongs to Jesus. They know that she serves Jesus. They know that she has been picked by Jesus. And they're... His angels are conversing with her. When you're a prophetic woman and you join a prophet's ministry, their angels talk to you because they know that you are in that anointing, that you're collected, you're selected. You are one with that man of God's spirit and his angels talk with you. His angels say things to you. The woman at Zarephath, is Elijah's angels that are now moving with her. That's why her well will never run dry. Because the prophet's reward, one of the prophet's reward is that we give you our angels. Prophets have innumerable angels just like God. That's why the Bible said, if you believe the prophet, you shall prosper. You probably wonder why if I believe a prophet that's sent to me, why would I prosper? Because that prophet has innumerable angels. Once you pitch your faith in what they're saying, that God told them to say to you and God sent them to talk to you and God sent them to be your prophet. When you believe what they say, their angels go and minister what they said to you in manifestation. So understand that there are angels that are transferred when you are a prophetic woman and you are following your prophet. You become even more prophetic. If you look back at your life, there was times where you could discern things. You could um, collect information and know that something was truth. Even though it wasn't blatantly said to you, you would catch it. You would discern it. So you had a, 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 a measure of prophetic ability. But when you are a prophetic woman and you're following your specific God-assigned prophet, those abilities to see and to hear and to know and to understand and to discern correctly and to perceive correctly, those antennas 
in the spirit become clear. You remember the old style TV? You couldn't hear certain things um, until you got the antenna correct. You couldn't see the TV clear until you got the antenna correct. Well, every prophetic woman has antennas. The antennas don't become perfectly correct until you're in submission to a prophet of God. So if you look at the life of Abigail, she's with Nabal, but her antennas is not perfectly correct. The Bible says that David brings her and makes her one, makes her one of his wives because the antennas are now being perfected. The antennas were perfected when David took her as his wife. The same way, when you look at the Shunammite woman, she takes care of Elijah, blesses Elijah. She's the prophetic woman. When she is looking at Elisha, she doesn't say what everybody else is saying because other people saw him walking too. But she, she is a prophetic woman. So the Bible says she perceived that he was a man of God. The perception, the perception was not in deception. It was in reception and she received the prophet. The perception was not in deception, but reception. And the prophetic woman in her came forth. And not only did she offer him love, but then she offered him a place in her house. And they built on a place just for Elisha. Think about that. The prophetic woman she discerns investment, sowing. She recognizes the man of God's need for her presence, for her ministry, for her pleasure, for her attentiveness, for her attendance. Even the attendance, the prophetic woman will always be in attendance. Mary Magdalene is the only one at the tomb. You think about that. Mary Magdalene is at the cross. She's always in attendance. She's always in attendance. The prophetic woman is attentive. She's in attendance and she's attentive. And she recognizes the divine moments in which God needs her eyes, her focus, her mind, her mood, her attitude, her, her whole aura. He needs that. So when God gives you a prophetic woman, he's giving you a woman that now is completing the task you've been called to do. When God gives you a prophetic woman, he is protecting you from evil that you can't see. Esther Haman. Evil you can't see. The prophetic woman is protection. Remember Deborah, she's a judge, but she's the prophetic woman. She recognizes things that Israel needs. She recognizes what the people of God needs because Deborah is the prophetic woman. It's the Deborah dimension that flows in the prophetic woman to make good judgments. Remember, Deborah is a judge. The prophetic woman makes good judgments because that prophetic woman is coming out of her. Remember, Deborah is a judge, and a judge makes verdicts, decisions, choices, establishes decrees. The prophetic woman will establish decrees. She will recognize what she's supposed to speak in a day. She will have words from the Holy Ghost to talk to her atmosphere. The prophetic woman will know what to declare what to establish in a week with her words, with her mouth. She will have streams of words and vocabulary for her finances, for her health, for her path, for her protection, for her mind, for her sexuality, for her sexuality. You'll have to decree things for your sexuality. The prophetic woman will have decrees for her emotions, for her focus, for her atmosphere, for her company, for her job, for her money. She'll have prophetic declarations for her connections. 
for events that will happen in their life. I want you to remember these things. And saints, remember what the word of God says in Proverbs 31. It says that this woman is girded with strength in Proverbs 31. Strength is a mental ability given from God that forces out evil suggestions. If you think about it, what did the woman do in Genesis? She rejected strength. The virtuous woman, why she is so powerful, because the woman with the issue of blood, the Bible said when she touched Jesus, virtue came out of Jesus. Because that woman became a virtuous woman. When Jesus' hem got touched, the garment got touched, virtue came out of Jesus. Jesus said, I felt power leave me. I felt virtue leave me. That's what a virtuous woman is. A virtuous woman is a receiver of what? Power. She's a receiver of the mentality of God. She's a receiver of the miracles of God. She's a receiver of the mantle of God. A virtuous woman receives God's mantles. So when you hear people say a virtuous woman, a virtuous woman, a virtuous woman is a receiver of the mind of Christ. Jesus can talk to her and rule her. And the Holy Spirit is the one guiding what she does on earth. Her reactions, her behavior, her conduct, her sexuality. Her sexuality. Her sexuality is being ruled by the Holy Ghost. As a woman, you will encounter your sexual realm. And I'm going to say this before I get off of here. Your sexual realm has to be managed by virtue. Because there's a time in which God will use your sexuality. And the time is not always when you feel sexual. Just remember that. And so the, the whole attempt of Satan is to get you wrapped up in the flesh so that you could have premature sexuality. And that ultimately perverts you and places you in a place mentally that you can't handle. There are things that are powerful that you're not supposed to engage until due season. And if you engage it before time, you break your mind down. And even when you're broken, you don't recognize it until the manifestation and the symptoms start showing up later on. The prophetic woman will recognize her sexuality must be governed by discretion, sanctification. And you have to get away from people that will press you into your wrong decisions in that sexual department. You have to do that yourself. Nobody could do that for you. Nobody could do that for you. If you ever notice when people mismanage that, even as a teenager, they become rebellious to their parents. They start cussing out their parents. You know why? Because they have opened themselves up to something that they can't handle. You ever wonder why, why do people start acting real hostile, real angry, real upset? Because they're doing something they can't handle. You ever wonder why people, women get agitated when they miss God in that realm. When they miss God in that realm, their emotions are a whirlwind. It's a tornado. It's up and down. It's crazy. They become ludicrous because that dimension was supposed to be preserved. Remember what I'm telling you. And when you identify these things and you recognize that you're the prophetic woman, God will send you to the king. There's a king on earth that you're created to serve. And they'll need you. King Hazarus needed Esther. Solomon needed the Queen of Sheba. The king will need you. Jesus needed Mary Magdalene. The king will need you. The king will need you. Esther, uh, Elisha needed the Shunammite woman. The king will need you. Abram needed Sarah. The king will need you. Adam needed Eve. The king will need you. 
the prophetic woman allows organization to happen. While men bring order, women bring organization. And when organization and order comes together, it's called the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. It's called victory. It's called unity. It's called a fresh anointing. It's called a portal for angels to ascend and descend. When order meets organization, remember what I'm telling you, this is powerful. 